got it wrong, but in a nicely novel change, the news is better than expected rather than worse. According to the Consumer Price Index numbers released this morning, the official rate at which prices are growing slowed in July by more than economists had forecast, reflecting in large part lower energy prices, particularly a significant drop in gasoline. Those numbers, while still at decades high levels, allow traders betting that the U.S. Central Bank has done its worst to gain some confidence in that bet. And with, you, and with U.S. midterm elections coming up fast, that could provide a better narrative for the embattled Biden administration should the Jerome Pedled uh, institution ease off a little bit. Now, as always, I like to show the latest chart from shadowstats.com, where economist John Williams tracks various forms of government statistics using the same methodologies they were calculated with around 1980. So let's show that chart now. That's about the last time that we had such high levels of inflation. So now today we're talking about levels that are just under 9%. But if we take a look at that chart, the red line shows the current way that inflation is measured, while the blue line shows that same data viewed through an apples-to-apples -apples comparison to how it was measured back in the 1980. As you can see there, uh, even with today's new data coming in lower, the rate of uh, we're still at historically high levels with the rate above 15 percent, were it not for those methodolo methodological uh, methodology changes. Can't talk at all today. So this is good news, but you, looking at this chart, you'll also note that we've actually seen dips like this before. So it will take more than one report to really get some confidence that inflation is in fact on its way down. As it stands right now, though, it is driving a market narrative that I think that we're seeing significantly across the crypto sector. Uh, Will, I'll throw this to you first. What do you think here? Yeah, I mean, it's good news, right? But only marginally good news. We're still at 8.5%. That really hasn't changed year over year, and that's not great. Uh, but it's nice to see that we're peaking, perhaps, and that energy prices are a key contributor there. And we've, I think most people have seen the price of the pump going down over the last few weeks to months, which is a huge bonus, right? I think within crypto, within Bitcoin, we do get a little cynical and we keep cheering for things to get worse because we want our thesis to play out where Bitcoin is adopted and crypto continues to be adopted. But that's not what we should really want, right? We should want everything to get a little better. We should want inflation to go down. We should want things to work as normal. Uh, that's kind of the interesting case for Bitcoin, right? We wouldn't need Bitcoin, really, if the dollar was used correctly and if there was actually some steady hands at the wheel. Uh, but we don't have a situation. We have 8.5% inflation, and we have a government that continues to spend money and cause inflation to go up. And we continue to have like these other macro factors in play, right? Like the Russo-Ukrainian war energy issues, uh, inability to create new oil reserves or new oil flows for the energy market. Uh, the one thing I do want to know is like core CPI didn't really change, right? And so that tells you that things are pretty steady there. And so for the average uh, American, life is not necessarily getting much better. Uh, going into the fall months, this really matters because we have midterms. Now for crypto itself, Bitcoin and Ethereum, we saw that they both pumped a little bit on this. Bitcoin broke above 24K for the fourth time in about the last 30 days. Ethereum is also up about 9% on the day. At this point, it's really difficult to say like how much they are trading based on inflation. Uh, maybe there's an argument that Bitcoin is trading the most on inflation it ever has. Uh, I think in the past, we've really just seen Bitcoin trade based on uh, perception and based on people's interest in cryptocurrency, expecting like the money to keep going up over time. Uh, but right now, it's basically hovering around wherever we see the CPI print. Bitcoin sort of moves with it and therefore the rest of the crypto market. At the same time, though, it's really hard to say, right? Because uh, breaking up 24K for the fourth time in the last 30 days or so, it's hard to say there's a correlation there. Jen, I'll throw it down to you. Yeah, I have a question, Adam, for you to maybe just break this down further. So we're saying that this is marginally better news, but there are still people who are struggling to afford the rising interest rates when it comes to their mortgage. There are still people who are struggling to you know, buy groceries, to feed their families. What does this news mean for those people? Uh, this news means that things are getting worse at a slightly slower pace than they were before. When you're talking about consumer price index numbers, I mean, seriously, you're talking about the rate at which prices are increasing. So we're not talking about, uh, and, and really that's what we're talking about here. We're talking about the rate at which they are growing. So this is a slight improvement in that things didn't get worse. Like things are getting worse, but they're not getting worse faster than they were last month, which has been the case for the last 18 months. Uh, this are actually 16 months. This broke a 16 uh, 16 month uh, month over month growth cycle in all of that. So 
it's not a thing that's going to help anybody. But as uh, sort of a uh, like a, a comma in the moment that we're in right now, right, where people are really looking at the, what the Federal Reserve is going to do, uh, you know, it matters there because the Federal Reserve is really all that matters. And well, you were saying that Bitcoin is tracking inflation. I would disagree with that. Bitcoin is tracking the Fed. Bitcoin is tracking at what point the Fed eases off on the rate hikes and returns to its supportive monetary policy. Now, my core thesis around this since the Fed started hiking earlier this year was that we would see the end of this uh, around the end of August, because at that point, the idea that you're going to increase interest rates and actually push the U.S. economy into a recession is completely toxic sort of to the ruling class. So there's a, a big kind of political angle that comes into play here that is hard to deny. So I think that this report is actually the best possible thing that Jerome Powell could have possibly hoped for because it allows him to have a plausible reason to say, OK, it's working. We can do less of this, even though really the reasons why they'll, they'll do less of it, this is not going to tame inflation. But the excuse gives them the pretense to then pay attention to the political considerations that I think really are the ones that trump most everything else here. So <laughs> aren't I cheery this morning? Yeah, I was going to say, Adam, very. every time you come on the show, it's just the most cheery start, the cheeriest start to our days. Well, to be fair, I think Adam <laughs> always like lands on the inflation conversation, right? I feel like consistently when you're on, it's like the CPI print it. comes out that week. Yeah, yeah, I don't know how it's happening. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, well, l l let me say one other thing about your comment. Um, so you were saying that, you know, like that a lot of people in Bitcoin kind of cheer this type of thing. And certainly I come off at that. This is not cheering for the destruction. This is cheering for the inability to hide the destruction of the money that has been occurring for basically all of our lives on this show here, which has typically been easy to hide, relatively speaking, but is now increasingly difficult to hide. So what I love and what makes me very happy is when reality cannot be masked. And this is not a true form of reality, but it is closer than we typically get in these types of political cycles. And so as a result of that, I like that because to the extent that these problems actually are exposed and talked about and discussed, they actually get solved. But that's not really the way that the system works today. Today, you're not allowed to talk about these things. And to the extent that you are, again, look at mainstream economists, right? They are professionally wrong for a living because what they really do is they support the narrative. Anybody who's a real economist who's actually looking at the numbers and getting this stuff right, they're dealing with for pri uh, private clients, right? Like, because that's valuable information. But public economists serve a narrative too. And it's very important to some people. It's just not useful to us in the markets today. Totally we agree with you. Let's Adam. move to. Oh, we do. We need like a like a inflation a with hat Adam. For us. Yeah, <laughs> just like it all descends on top of us. But I totally agree with you. Like uh, economists, especially in the Fed, are politicians at a certain point, and they are, are responsible to the administration. That's why the Biden administration got these numbers first, right? And they rolled them out this morning.